awesome. All right, here we are. Welcome back to Book Wave, the book club podcast. Back for another wave cast with a special guest. I'm your host, Scott, joined today, as usual, by Pat. Hey, yeah. Will. Hey. And our special guest, two more Vs. Yeah, nice to meet everyone. So uh, let's just uh, let's just start off with a, a little introduction. Why don't you let our audience know who you are, the kind of music you've been working on, and what made you internet famous around these parts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd go so far, but um, I'm yeah, I'm I'm Tuma Vies or, or Marvin, um, and I I I'm a musician. I make I, I started making music. Well, when I was like 13 or something like that, but never anything serious except like cover bands or something. Um, and I also didn't live much of a productive life, let's say, until I came across uh, Jordan Peterson, as as many of us, uh, of us, I suppose. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and... Um, then, like shortly after learning about Peterson, I also learned about Akira the Don, who who brought you together too. I I think oh, with yes. with Bookwave, right? Um, and his like he 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 even promotes it as like a psychotechnology, the music that he makes, the meaning wave stuff, because it's it's brainwashing people or it's giving people the the ability to brainwash themselves uh, mm -hmm. out of toxic mindsets and into more productive, more healthy mindsets. Um, and that's exactly what I did <laughs> with this stuff. I listened to it nonstop, like literally nonstop. I had it play while I was sleeping and then it uh, was playing already when I was getting up and while I was doing anything in the house and, and so on. And that worked pretty well. And then sometime in, I think, two th 2019, uh, Akira put out, a question he was looking for someone who could play some guitar parts for him or whatever and uh i said i could do that <laughs> and he that's that's when we started working together i think that was for the path with jocko willing and he sent me something over where he was he was humming a melody that he'd want on on guitar i have a, i have a bunch of those recordings it's always yeah it, it was fun um also very very easy to work with then uh, because I because I knew what he wanted for 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 that stuff and from then on we we worked I, I don't know how many like maybe six or seven maybe five albums the the Goggins is one um, two Peterson albums um, also the Navarre record I think that that's the one that I enjoy the most um, and yeah, that was a very, very interesting journey and was also what made me uh, take music more seriously. Like I wanted to, I wanted to be a mu musician uh, before, but I never had the, let's say the motivation or something like that. Also, I lacked the discipline and uh, there wasn't, he, he, he was an external force that I had to adjust to i couldn't just uh, push away the date into the future with my like like i did with my personal stuff um there was nothing nothing driving me really and uh, so so i learned quite a lot while i was while i was working with him and um then that petered out over time a little and um i focused more on my own stuff uh i i, I also <laughs> The things, the the music that Akira makes um, is, I think, something that possibly we will need uh, for 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 the for the betterment of society. Let's say for the things that lie ahead. I think that we need a lot more people to do um, the things that the speakers that he samples want us to do or encourage us to do to to ultimately save us from the brink of d destruction i suppose but you don't have to be so dramatic it can also be just so that we can we can we can you know um make the world a little more habitable in 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 the way that that's that's in our hands and so i wanted to do that too uh, not exactly what akira does of course because that's his thing but i but i think that 
mixing speakers into your music is something more more universal or more general. I was talking to my stepdad, for example, about the Alan Watts songs. And he said that he heard that in, like, he's a big techno guy and house music guy. And he heard that in a bunch of techno and house mixes where people just were, were mixing Alan Watts quotes. And it's not as sophisticated as what, what Akira then did with Meaning Wave, not like whole talks, but, um, but still uh, the, the idea was, was, was loosely around, I would say. And so I, I started to do that too. And it took me a, a while to put out my own songs because I never knew how to finish a song. Like I got to the point where I had the, the main melodies straight and also drums like loosely collected and, and all of that. But there was still this, in a, I, I couldn't articulate the difference between what I was having ready like as demos and then the songs that I, I heard on the radio or on Spotify, like finished songs. It was something that I, I just couldn't grasp. Uh, but luckily for me, I have a friend who's really, really into the technical aspects of music, like mixing and also parts of musical theory and mastering and all that stuff. So we, we sat together on that and um, he provided uh, the first the first uh, rough beats that we then used to to uh, to put to put to music. Um, Forgiven, let go is like one of those songs or opening Pandora's box. That that's all the the, the guy I'm talking about. That's Neocron. That's all Neocron's um, uh, music, let's say. Um, and I and I arranged that and put the speech on there. And from that, I well, I learned a lot from him then too, and and the processes, and also like watched YouTube videos on it and, and that stuff. Um, and yeah, now the music that I make is, is, is we call it Flo-Fi. Meaning Wave is Akira's copyrighted term that's describing his specific stuff. Uh, and I like, don't want to steal his, his words and, 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 and his, his, you know, his, his property. Um, it's so we call it. Yeah, right, right. Um, and, so I, I don't know if it's gonna 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 be accepted by everyone, but I think flofi is a good general g genre name for for the speeches with music because the you know lofi is like low fidelity and that's the point of lofi music and flofi that's like the point of the 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 that's it's 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 all um, concentrating on the flow like the music revolves around that specifically. So I thought that might might fit, which I like also that a is. Lot. You could also yeah, right. put meaning wave into the genre of flow fi too if you really needed to. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, right. So I, I wanted to have like this in inclusive thing though. I think f we we first went with flow pop and then uh the, yeah, I did, yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> then Neutron came up with like that's let's make flow fi instead of pop because we had this discussion about um about now well if it's pop music what we do and it really isn't <laughs> uh, i mean maybe there are some pop aspects to it like this electronic stuff but uh, ultimately it's also not popular in the sense that katy perry is popular or whoever <laughs> is, is like a famous musician today right well if i can jump in um mm -hmm. i have a couple things i want to say first of all thank you marvin for sharing your story and coming on that's <laughs> That was a really interesting story and really powerful. And there was a lot of topics that I, I know the three of us would love to talk to you for the next six hours about. But, <laughs> <I'm free>. uh, <laughs> if I can recap for the viewers at home, you're telling us you've always had a lifelong interest in music. And then you discovered Akira the Dawn and self brainwashed and gave yourself sort of that grit that you needed to get to a place where you were able to then feature with Akira. And you're now making your own music, you hit another hiccup, but then you became interdependent like every good human should, and you've got a partner and you're putting out music. So my question for you before we go over to Scott or Pat would be, where can we find your music? Uh, well, you can find my music, I think, on every major streaming service, uh, and but like on wow. YouTube. Uh, Congratulations, on, on... that's awesome. Hey, just like <laughs> <Yeah>. Bookwave. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, that's really nice, cool. Nice. And and not to forget, you're defining a new genre. So in 50 years, when we all have hundreds of albums of Flo-Fi, it's going to be really cool to have had this conversation. So thanks for taking <laughs> the time today. Uh, thank you for, for talking to me. I feel blessed. Yeah, I, feel like, Pat? I feel like we could talk for, you know, six hours just based on like the music industry today and how like a revolution or an evolution is needed today. Like Akira always talks about the new psychedelic age of music and, you know, the genres are changing, but the way we go about it really needs to change too, because when, when you listen to music all day, like I do, like I'm a musician too, music is huge in my life and I listen to music all day and the lyrics are, you know, about murder and hatred or <laughs> depression you know that that begins to affect you in ways that you don't want to let it so when i discovered akira it was like okay i love metal i can listen to you know whatever i want most of the time but when i need that little boost i can get it i can get the meaning through music and through the wave and i really like some of the stuff that you have done too especially with the jonathan peugeot speeches and the 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 recent Jordan Peterson one where he talks about belief in God and it's like like the, the Akira wave gets me like riled up and ready to go and motivates me but when I listen to your music it's like wow this this was that speech that I remember that really made me think and that brings me back into mm -hmm. that zone of just making me consider that speech over and over again like we could talk for another six hours about what Jordan Peterson really means about I act as if God exists. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. also the idea that Akira is making music uh, that goes through different speeches is in in a way hypnotic because you're not mm -hmm. just listening to, you know, lectures or verbal judo going on. But when you add music to it, it makes it, you know, m more interesting, too. And that reminds me of how Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, mm -hmm. when he was working with Atticus Ross to compose the score for the Social Network movie, mm -hmm. he was um, what he would he and Atticus would do would just analyze a certain scene when there was a lot of dialogue going on. And he wanted to be able to create a melody or a beat that is easily heard, not just um, not just kind of like flowing through like a normal river or anything like that. Just like he wants the audience to be able to listen very carefully and how it manages to convey their emotion in the music with the dialogue of the screenplay. And that's what it reminded me of. So it was rather interesting. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, it's it's dramatizing and emphasizing uh, the words. I, I I I've noticed when working with speeches that uh, we all I mean some more and some less, but we all have a, an inherent rhythm to the way that we speak and even a melody. So to me, it seems like there's always music behind it. It's just not not audible you know it's it's only audible in the in the well in the in the rhythm that we can hear um but th I, there's this one song akira and i did music is everything where jordan talks about uh how the world is is made out of patterns the same way that music is made out of patterns and so i think the the idea of of soundtracks for for movies that it, it makes a lot of sense because often the, i don't know if you have the same experience but often in in dramatic situations it feels like there's music like not i can hear music in my head but it, it's hard to describe but yeah, it doesn't like, seem still uh, there's like a vibe it's, hidden in the background that you can just right. barely pick up on well and that's the thing right like even with speech the the tonality that you express yourself with like if you're in a situation of conflict and someone's in your face and angry and raising their voice like it makes you feel a certain way and i think 
when we talk about hypnosis, right, like music and Netflix and video games, all of these things, they're putting us in a state of hypnosis. They say we're in a state of trance 95% of the day or something like that. But the ability to maybe score a movie and make it so that you don't not notice the music, but you don't notice it either. And it's able to actually take you to the places that the scenes are also trying to take you to that. And with the music too, right? Like where it's intentional and it does something. It's not just this top charts of a hundred, one and a half minute songs that you're going to listen to and remember the lyrics and they make you do things. And now you're in the club and the club is a plane. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, but yeah, the best example I always think about is Star Wars. Like the music of that movie of that, like the original trilogy is 80% of it. Like I always think of that one scene where Luke's looking off at the twin sun setting like that without the music, without John Williams, that's just, you know, a moisture farmer watching the sunset. There's no meaning there, but the music <laughs> really brings it out. <laughs> I have to out myself. I haven't watched Star Wars, but I will. And now that you said that and pay pay attention to, to the music. Was yeah. never a Star Wars guy, always, always more into Harry Potter. I don't know. That's oh, always you. what everybody says when I always bring up Star Wars. <laughs> now I was more of a Harry Potter guy. <laughs> you can do all three. Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah I found that out about Lord of the Rings like a few days ago. I, I watched them for the first time really attentive, and I loved them. Re amazing stories. We We're celebrating 20 years of the movies. Don't forget this Star year. Trek, too. Hmm. Oh, Star Trek, haven't yeah. gotten into that either. Pat's a Trekkie. Oh. <laughs> I mean, well, not exactly a Trekkie, more of a casual fan of Star Trek. Just under Doctor Who. Thing. Can we mm -hmm. talk about Doctor <laughs> Who? <laughs> so, no. Martin, um, how do you uh, go about uh, creating a song? What's your process? Mm. Most of the time, I have demos that I try to get ready in so far that it has a basic structure and most of the instruments that I want to have in there are already in there. And then I reach a point where I don't really know how to progress from that um, because I it, it needs it needs more structure, but the structure comes then with the sound bit that I sound bit that I want to want to add to that. So I have um, I have some some like three minute clips that I that I downloaded off of YouTube. Uh, and I also have a bunch of, like, a handful of talks that I segmented fully um, from from Pajot and also from like an orthodox thinker, David Patrick Harry. That's what I'm working on uh, right now. The new stuff. Um, and I, yeah, well, I, I I put the music on there and I see if if something something clicks and if it doesn't i sometimes i still listen till the end because then in the in the middle part there's something that just aligns naturally but uh it, that's what i look for like these synchronistic bits where i didn't have to do anything yet but it already fit and also like the tonality of what's being talked about uh, of, of of the speaking and if, if the vibe of my music fits that in 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 any way um and that's also an interesting uh, search sometimes because uh, we had some bits where Jordan was talking about something devastating uh, and and sad, but his undertone wasn't devastating. It was more like, yeah, and even if it's that way or that way, you can still find light and you can still, you know, so there, there was hope, but it, it wasn't that directly expressed and uh, that's what i then try to elevate with the music i don't like to go into into full frustration mode or something like that that's uh what i that's that's one of the reasons why i don't really listen to punk rock anymore or, or stuff like that i did i only listened to stuff like that before uh, and i can't anymore now because it's mostly just you know whining about ex-girlfriends <laughs> while, <laughs> while that melancholy uh, uh, that melancholy can can be nice uh, from from time to time. Uh, I don't like living in that, um, right. and so yeah. 
and yeah that that's what it comes down to like what you consume is is gonna be what you kind of live right like a, an acorn only grows into an oak tree if you're listening to emo music all day you might find yourself having emo <laughs> thoughts yes <laughs> yes yeah. very much you are I was a big eat. my chemical romance guy for for example you are I don't you eat on more than one right. levels the music right. you eat the food you eat but it's it's great you know because you're making like these green all natural consumption music things like <laughs> you're a farmer of all natural songs <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try to be, of course. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's also, I had that with a handful of songs where I listened to a sound bit and I said, okay, that has to be music for that and I have to make something. Um, and then I then I find a melody that melody that, that fits fits there. I have one about decolocalization. Uh, that's you know the whole the process where the Soviet Union stuffed six million Ukrainians to death. Jordan talked about that, and when I I don't I didn't put that song out yet, but uh, I'm working on it, and that's one of those where I started making the song after I heard the after I heard the the speech. Right, interesting. So where do you go from there? So in three years, you know, what would be the big goal that you want to put on yourself? For your future you know assuming you have success in all of these you know things that you know that you're doing what would be the big goal the stretch goal for you okay the hmm, the biggest the biggest one is not something that i think i will reach alone i think that's a societal one let's say but the idea behind what you know what i mentioned this uh, earlier in, in my introduction um that I, I think we can do this for the betterment of society. And it's that, okay, so I love entertainment culture and I, I, I love to get lost in a show or in a movie or, or in a book um, and in music, but most of that is pointless. Like there's no higher meaning and even the opposite. Like it seems to me that Hollywood writers nowadays try to sub, subvert uh, the the big lessons that we can learn from from music and try to turn them around and make people more hedonistic and and also more divided in a way and I don't like that but it's like it's this complete lack of meaning like the meaning crisis that John Vaveki and Jonathan Pajot and John Peterson all talk about uh, I see that and I feel that too like I have that hunger for meaning like I I can't I mean I do sometimes but I can't really uh, engage in, in mundane topics anymore, not because I'm so smart, but just because it, like, it feels so, I feel so driven to go somewhere else when I'm talking about something that has no effect on anything and does no good for anything. Um, and I, I think that that's something that most people, maybe everyone, feels to some degree. And I think it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and uh people are gonna gonna flip like i mean depression rate is, is is up since 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 at least a decade but i suppose longer um and and going up even more and people engage in hedonism in the worst ways and like over half of the the marriages get divorced and and all of that stuff so it's all everything's falling apart like there's a, there's this this giant fragmentation taking place and i think that we we it might be just the times that we live that we live in and it's inevitable and it will lead to an end that's possible but i think it's also possible that this this lack of meaning and this hunger for meaning that's in people will lead to them switching around and looking for meaning in the in, in a similar way that I did uh, excessively and I think um, entertainment culture can be used for that like we can we can make funny entertaining and and, and gripping shows uh, where people learn something for their lives where you can actually use that for your development and that's the same thing that Akira does with his music and that's what I try to do with my music and I hope that more people come up, and also do that and sample more more important speakers and thoughts uh, than Akira and I ever could, and and so that that it, that it grows and grows, and that that 
what the focus that we have on hedonism and on expediency and and all that now i i hope that that focus will shift to the opposite of that to 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 meaning and to to love and to beauty and truth and and that and i i think that's possible but we have to provide the tools for that and so that's what i try to participate in so do that's you think that that's interesting that you bring that up uh, because i remember listening to john verveke mentioning mythology and the stories uh, aligned in mythology and mm -hmm how we are so drawn to it, even if we don't know what it means, we like the stories and the characters that are in, enveloped in that. That's why we have so many good uh, franchises like Star Wars and Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings that give us that kind of, that kind of story and that universe that we're drawn into. And, this, and of course, it's been made over a decade ago, way before, you know, the whole woke culture, you know, grew and everything but yeah it is rather important to just go back and understand the main concepts of storytelling and that there is um that there is some hope for fictional characters to change and be redemptive and um and even understand that yes there is suffering but that's the whole point of growing once we understand what suffering is, where it comes from, what it means, we can finally alternate our perspectives into something else entirely that will lead us to more positive thinking and growing and everything like that. Maybe learn to be grateful in our suffering, hashtag Jordan Peterson. But mm -hmm. Marvin, I'm gonna challenge you and say that that sounded a bit more like a wishy-washy dream. <laughs> and I don't know if yeah, you know or if I'm just speculating, but it sounded like you might be saying that you could see yourself in a few years being part of a bigger team developing some sort of larger form consumption media content, perhaps a YouTube series, a TV show, a movie, but generating that real digestible medium for people that takes the FloFi sort of manifesto, let's say. And, and <laughs> That's evolve a it word. into <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is and evolve it into media that you know counteracts this problem this void of meaning that's the let's call it a plan <laughs> that's the plan hell yeah <laughs> that sounds awesome i could see you growing a great team around you and i i'm already thinking of people who i've seen in these communities who are enmeshed in and making something you know like the, the ability for a YouTube series to get to Netflix in the past five years, it's just incredible what could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I also, I, th I think that's possible. I mean, for the people watching, if you're someone who can do something that's, that's, that's useful in any way for that, uh, hit me up like on discord or on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and see if we can, can start to find out how to do that. Um, right now, the only thing that I'm involved in, uh, really is music. And I don't really know how to write. Like I wrote some stories before, um, and, and, and that, but I have no, I have no practical experience and I have also no idea if that's, that's the thing that I should directly be involved in. But I think the, as you as you said, like the the FloFi manifesto, I think that we can we can try I started to... something. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can we can try to pin down the the core the core necessities or the core values or th something like that, and then try to work with that. Like I I um, release under a label name Eleventh Wave Productions, um, and that might be that that would be a place where i would like to to include other um other mediums uh as as tv shows or books or whatever um if if i ever were to 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 be engaged in something like that it's also that i'm working with sorting myself out and mercury black um and we have no idea where that's going to lead right now uh, some people were leaving and uh, we were restructuring the way that we that we um, put out content and try to give the whole thing a structure. We're talking to Tyler. Uh, 
I'm not quite sure about his last name, who's setting up the Metagora website. I don't know if you've heard of that, where he tries to incorporate all the major um, communities like uh, uh, the... He, he, he's been he's been talking to Eric Weinstein, for example, and I think he's also involved with John, John Vavecki, and um, Peterson would be also included in that, Pajot, uh, sorting myself out in Mercury Black, too. And so he's trying to bring all those communities, which are kind of working at the same goal, um, uh, he's trying to put them together into one place and to connect them with each other. So I think that would also be a place to look for uh, what we just talked about with, um, you know, making something more more graspable than than the than the vague dream that I that I propose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to start having dreams, and then you know, and like from your musings upon the state of Hollywood, I inferred that you know this is this guy wants to produce. And he's going to keep producing. But now I got to ask you if you could give a piece of advice to anybody who was in the position you were in maybe 10 years ago, whatever period of time you think is right. When was that? And what advice would you give them that they could practically take into their life in the next week? Other than that's... digest 168 hours of the meaning wave. Every... Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that would be my first point. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say I, habits are problematic. Uh, look at, look at your habits and see if you can try to alter them because that's what mostly keeps me in my unproductive states is that I, I, I have just, just a decade old habit that I can't get out of. And it keeps me, or it kept me from from doing the things that I should do. So stop reading regularly. I mean, that's a that's a basic advice, but it's so important. It, it it changes so much. Stop stop engaging with social media. Also, that's not helpful at all. Um, even retweeting stuff and all that. If you say like that's that's my my take on it. Oh, I'm spreading information. This is important for people to know. But who's gonna read your tweets if you don't have like you know if you don't have like a hundred thousand followers? What's 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 the like what's the deal? Why 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 would you waste time on that? Stop that. And also pick a thing that you're that you're good at and that you're passionate for, and then do that and do especially the parts that you don't like about it because you there even with me and making music there there's stuff about that that i don't like i don't enjoy having to correct my my uh, whatever i played for example like sometimes i'm not exactly in time so i have to I have to um cut a little bit or, or something like that or re-record or whatever um and i i don't like doing things over uh, but do that and do it more often and do it more frequently so that you get adjusted to it and so that it becomes part of your routine. Yeah, and I don't like also, practicing my scales, but it's necessary. <laughs> right, right, exact, exactly that, like practice. And go to church. L look for a good church. Like I'm, I'm, I really, really mean that. Go to church or in, in some other way engage in, 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 in organized religion. And I would also say engage in organized Christian religion not don't look at other religions and all of that but i think that um that helps a lot it gives the moral compass that we're trying to adhere to anyway like you can't escape that um and so you can just why not look at the thing itself instead of your vague notions of it like, just do it stop being like th this is to myself stop being an arrogant 13 year old atheist uh, and just you know <laughs> engage with ideas honestly um, so I, I think that's the things that I would, yeah, that I would advise. That's great. There's a lot to chew on there. <laughs> to add on to what you mean by frustration, it, that's a key thing. And you have to experience a lot of frustration in order to tame it properly. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that I don't like writing or editing or revising my current novel right now, but I have mm -hmm. to in order to make it structure and easily readable. Same with voice acting. I have to do, you know, raw sound editing 
and I have to cut out a lot of things, which is very repetitive, and I don't like it either. But that's part of the process. So, and we've all yeah, exactly. What 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 novel are you working on? I didn't know that. It's a science fiction novel. Nice. So, how like when will I be able to read that? Hopefully this year. <laughs> I mean, that's the, most, that's the closest, most accurate um, time frame that I can give. So, hey, that's better than in five years. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Let me know which when I've it's been, out. Which I've been working on. That's the that's how long I've been writing this. I read a few of the feel- rough chapters, and I really liked it. He's got a good premise going on, so I'm looking forward to it too. Now I'm extra curious. Nice. <laughs> one of my favorite parts just a little tangential we're reading lord of the rings right now but mm-hmm. one of the, my favorite parts i found in that story is just that the success of the good always took so dang long and it's like you almost can't have a great victory without thinking that you're gonna fail for 25 years <laughs> losing every single battle up until the point that it's like no you win <laughs> so yeah. keep on keeping on <laughs> yeah and like jordan peterson would say you have to have an aim and even if you don't like hit that target you're still a lot closer to your next target than you would be if you weren't going for it at the first time so you know shoot for the stars or shoot for the moon land somewhere among the stars all that good stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah he has one one I don't know if it's from the biblical series. I'm not. I'm not sure. But, but where he has also this presentation where he shows like the the aim and then then going at it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I I love that. But that was very very helpful. I wasn't aware of it being okay to, you know, to to have a bad first draft, for example. Like that's what mm-hmm. held me back a lot. That I just I thought, okay, I'm gonna stop. And it has to be perfect. And then I didn't start because I didn't find the perfect <laughs> beginning. Yeah, um, toxic perfectionism is the downfall of our generation. Right, right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> is better than perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, if I did it perfectly, then I I would be done. And then what would I do with myself? And it's like, you know, you, you wouldn't do it perfectly. And you wouldn't be done. And you wouldn't even recognize yourself if you got this done. And right. you feel like crap afterwards. Yeah, and it's probably right. pretty good too. Yeah, just think of all all of your favorite art, and if they just kept trying to perfect it, how much, like they would lose from it. Like sometimes the raw tracks are always the best. Like, and then you can't perfect it afterwards. It's like you nail it the first time, and then you never get it afterwards. And then they start to release all these remasters, and then. You know, with the Star Wars movies, the, the special editions with all of the added special effects took away all of the charm from, like, the originals of what made them so nice. And, like, honestly, you can't create something perfect because yeah. it's not enjoyable. I Like, for me, Game of Thrones was so well produced and so well written and the CGI was so magnificent. I was like, well, this is great. I don't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> Then you must have loved season eight, right? <laughs> yeah. I stopped at like season three. I was like, this is such a well-written and well-produced show. There's so much money going into this. I'd like to see the guy with a shoestring budget tell me about the values in Spain. Like, I, I'm not looking for that well-produced story. It's it's too shiny for me. I can't relate uh, to it. You have something similar. Like, I was a big Blink-182 fan um most of my life and i can't really enjoy it. like it's not that i don't like the songs that i put out now but they're just so polished and so well they have like 20 people writing uh on it and and that's yeah. it it just does nothing for me not really well it's least. like once you've perfected the medium and amassed all of the resources to create the greatest song in capitalistic society it's like leave you're done. Go do something <laughs> great. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, give your guitars to someone who doesn't know how to play them and go cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you could perfect that too. I guess I, exactly. I, the point. I agree. <laughs> that's also, Peterson has this point where he talks about um, limitation being necessary for being. 
um, in 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 a, in a in a very weird way, and I I bought into that. I I'm also trying to make a song out of that bit since like that's the first song that I started and I haven't finished it yet. Um, like literally the first FloFi song that I ever did, um, where he gets into in in the first part he talks about how his son um how how he was thinking about how he could protect his son and how 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 he could make him perfect and and you know make him 15 feet tall and made out of metal and 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 all of that stuff so that nothing could hurt him uh and then in thinking about that he also came to the conclusion that the the imperfections about us are in a way what make us us and what make us lovable it's not that you don't wish for people to become better than they are uh but but still if you were to take all of that away in one go then there'd be you know an emotionless emotionless uh, robot left and, and not a not a person and i think that's maybe the same with maybe the same with being I think Jordan Peterson also talk, takes that same analogy for like the postmodernists in that analogy, trying to like remove that limitation. Like, no, I don't have to be limited by these regular story that we're living in. I can be whatever I want. I just have to, you know, customize my character from this drop down menu and I'm whoever I want. I don't have to <laughs> do anything to become who I need to be. I just choose it and then I'm perfect the way I am. And Jordan Peterson's well, there to say, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's almost like if you were born with all the tools you needed for this life, you wouldn't be able to have a life because all of the lessons would be pointless and you would be isolated from experience and you'd have this whole other set of limitations. And then, you know, with, you know, social justice, there's unwarranted limitations where it's like we should as a race, as a, a human race be trying to mitigate all of these unwarranted limitations, but you, you got to have resistance. You got to have fire. You got to be tempered in something. Otherwise it's like, you're not like you're God at that point, And you're completely <laughs> abstract from the human race. You aren't living. Which is also a point that Alan Watts made. Even he was talking about even the, the, the holiest of saints or the, the wisest of the enlightened gurus or whatever needs something to ground them to reality, some little flaw or something like that. Or otherwise that's his words, not mine. He would disappear. And like, I, it's hard to see that physically, you know, someone becoming perfect and just pop and they're gone. But I, I see, I, I see that what, what he means, um, uh, theoretically, let's say. Well, it's like the uh, the Ents in Lord of the Rings, right? Because they are a part of the world and the world is getting destroyed by the forces of evil, they engage in the fight. But if they didn't have that, they would be... Like, why would you even participate in an experience that is decaying and impermanent when you are perfect and flawless? Because, it, right. it, because your entire mode of perception shifts to, well, this is completely irrelevant because I am immortal. Hmm. Yeah, right. Because if I save them all in a hundred years, they all die. So what's the point? <laughs> right. Yeah. Also, that's another form of storytelling, and that reminds me of a bit in the Thin Red Line, both in the novel and in the movie, where two soldiers have different perspectives about what is nature during the middle of World War II, while fighting the Japanese. One is optimistic; the other one is pessimistic insert Elon Musk's optimism versus pessimism song, but um, but that's a good way of um, distinguishing our differences and how we live through these different experiences, whether it be war or love or homelessness or whatever. And just to see that, you know, we're not just aiming for, you know, one different thing or being emotionless and thinking that we have everything figured out and we have everything having those flaws is a way of just shedding a bit of ourselves and seeing what we are held back on um or even just trying to fix something 
and then moving forward with that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you've read the novel, The Thin Red Line, or seen the movie or anything like that, but no. it's it's um <laughs> it's it's an interesting uh interesting thing. So I did picture Elon Musk singing a nursery rhyme though, like when, when he said that, <laughs> and that was because I haven't heard it, and uh, my brain just did things, and it was hilarious. <laughs> it's also interesting um, what Will, what you said said a little earlier about if you were perfect, you would be God. It's like that's true. Like in 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 Christian. Yeah, I've, I've I mean, heard Jordan interesting. Peterson. I've heard Jordan Peterson say like the only thing that you know we have that God doesn't have is limitations. So that yeah, that, this that is... always pops up in the back of my head when I think about this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's this Jewish riddle, right? Where they say what what does a uh, an omnipotent, om, omnis omniscient, um, and something other being lack, and then the answer the answer is limitations. I mean, omnipotent, right? Being black, and the answer is uh, is is limitations, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true, um, and that's also something that's pointing at God. But maybe that's only through my lens, because you know that's what I'm focusing on right now in my private life. But hmm. we don't like we 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 literally can't have per perfection because perfection would need to take everything into account you just we can't it's impossible for us also because we have a perspective um in the world and that that makes it limited because if you have your perspective you can't have my perspective you can take on parts of it but you will never have the full experience and only a being that has has all these perspectives at once plus something outside of that could be you know could take everything into account and could 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 know about everything and react to everything the way that needs to be reacted to and and whatever we would uh want to see from a perfect human being and so yeah and it's, it's funny too because that's the rub of it right like all four of us can say yeah perfection's unattainable if we were perfect we wouldn't be human and also i'm not going to start working because i can't make it perfectly <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> yeah but yes i agree yes i agree no i can't start working sorry <laughs> it's like there's, it's like there's right, two right. options at that point like some people reject the idea that they have limitations and some people embrace the idea that they have limitations and you can only really go from there as you know someone carving your own path or a victim you know the bad guys from atlas shrugged <laughs> yeah well and that's just it like imagine if van gogh stopped painting because he wasn't getting success right like we don't have the perspective of our audience Hopefully we have a part of it, but we don't have the appreciation of anything we create because we're critical, but that shouldn't be evidence for us to stop and not wanting to start shouldn't be evidence for us to not start. It should just be something that our brain does because we don't quite understand it and we ignore that data and we can do that every time we have to help somebody else start. <laughs> if your dog needs to take medicine, you'll give it to it every single time he needs to take his medicine. But if you need to do something on a routine or a schedule, you let the brain get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like when we but, started this podcast at the very beginning and we were just like doing audio meetings about the book meditations. Just like if, if we were obsessed with making it a perfect podcast back then, we would have never started it. But... Thankfully, we're just focusing on, you know, getting some guys together to read some books about ancient Greek philosophy. <laughs> Which is also... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something, it has something compelling to it. I know that, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen a video from Mercury from Sorting Myself Out, but yeah, he yeah, has I've like... I've seen your podcast with him, and I think I've seen him with like some of the randos and here and there. Right, so he's that he's he's got this like very low quality camera and audio, and also no no setup behind him like a logo or something like that. So it's all just it's it, he's a, he's a normal 
I mean, normal is also maybe not the right, but he's a normal human being. Yeah, that's um, subjective term these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not and not like the established entertainer, but that's part of his uh, uh, charm. Let's say is is that he's uh, he's he's a guy, and we can you can you can you can talk to him like like a guy, and I think that's also compelling. Maybe uh, about about um you and your beginnings is that you know it's it's like hanging out with friends then and not like listening to an entertainer and that's that especially since i mean now with COVID and all that we're isolating but also before that society was isolating more and more even though we got more and more connected in, in a weird way that i don't understand and <laughs> so people are i mean i know that i am subconsciously and i think that people are looking for for that for that connection and again again and they get that in formats like this well and the thing is too like we still know so little like we, we started to learn a bit about the brain but it's like you talk about you know the feeling you get from hanging out with friends is the same feeling you get from watching netflix so you do four hours a night of netflix all of a sudden you don't crave friends and it's like your body's not going to make you want friends because you're getting that need met in the wrong way and it's like i've been playing around with like shadow flow states you know where it's like mm -hmm. your body feels like you're having a great time and doing something awesome and meaningful and then you stop and your brain's like that was completely pointless like <laughs> i was oh, not wow. awesome i just i was played <laughs> skyrim for three hours and then i stopped playing and I was still sitting here the whole time. So really what happened? <laughs> right. And it's like the feeling of awesome doesn't usually come from the action of doing awesome. But it does come right after. And it stays a lot longer than it does when it comes from video games and all sorts of other terrible things. True. I hadn't even noticed that, that it comes afterwards. But you're right. It's like that, the residual awesome feeling. If, if the thing you're doing is only going to make you feel as good as it makes you feel while you're doing it, what's the point? You want to invest your money so that it pays you down the road. You want to invest your actions so that it makes emotions and beliefs and behaviors down the road. And video gaming and staying up late and drinking alcohol doesn't make you feel good 12 hours later. It just doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's only a temporary fix. But right. man, hitting a sick snowboarding jump, I still feel good about that three days later. It's it's not helping nice. a child or anything, but it's a heck of a lot better than gaming. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's exercise too, so you're keeping your body moving. Yeah, it's literally action. Whereas all of these screen times, it's like you're fatiguing your brain, but you're not doing anything to your body. And then you try and go to sleep and it's like your body hasn't done anything but your brain is pooped, which means you don't have the brain defense mechanisms. And now the shadow's just like, hey, what's up? I hate everything about you. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. Very accurate. <laughs> nice. Why am I in love with you? Uh -huh. <laughs> like <Lincoln> Park. <laughs> oh, that's good. So Marvin, um, another question that I like to raise, since we're a book club, uh, podcast is there a book or a list of books that resonate with you yes i mean apart from the the obligatory gulag archipelago that peterson fans have to give <laughs> um i would i would say um i i read an uh, a biography on on stalin that read itself like like a novel but it was only based on factual information so it, it was it wasn't a novel but it was so interesting uh, and 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 gripping as it was i if you give me a minute i'll get it and then like then i can show you because i forgot the title sure okay. perfect <laughs> uh, the good old gulag archipelago oh, why is that always the first book that comes to mind for everyone talking about jordan peterson <laughs> that's not, hilarious it's not even 12 rules for life or maps of meaning or the 12 more, 12 more rules, rules. <laughs> yeah three Go volumes and it's 
supposedly it takes you about a day or two to get through the entire thing. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's definitely one we're gonna have to get through as as a book wave gulag archipelago. Oh, he's brought in a whole stack. Okay, I got a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the the Stalin one. Okay. The first in-depth really... biography. Okay. Based right. on explosive new data or something. Uh, explosive new data, new new documents from Russia's secret archive. So this guy Edward Edward something um was was the first who was granted access to to uh, kgb files and all that that basically i'm gonna take that uh i'm, I'm gonna spoil you uh that 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 show that stalin was about to start a nuclear war and that he was uh, killed by his um by, by i forgot whom someone around him um because of that like they they knew that he was going to do that and they didn't want the whole world to be blown up because that's what would have happened obviously and so they 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 took him out um wow. but uh, spoiler spoilering that is no like it doesn't take away from from the book just read it it's it's uh yeah it's shocking but it's also necessary to see how these societies looked because we're heading there and i think uh, we should well, stop heading there, <laughs> but also be kind of be kind of prepared because we can't stop everything. And so, yeah, I think it's it's necessary to adjust to that. Yeah. Then there's uh, explaining postmodernism from Stephen Hicks. Uh, that's also an amazing book because it gives you the tools to to really dismantle postmodernism, also from a historical perspective and and all that. And it, you know. I, I read this book and I, and and also the Stalin one and also listened to Peterson a lot and I had some discussions with communists and I, I noticed that it was very very easy to just render them speechless in a way uh, and and show the people around that there's no need at all to adhere to that kind of ideology like there's nothing good about it um, and it's all motivated by resentment and even if there's someone who has like a good heart who says like let's help other people. Um, if they if they stick to that uh, after they learn that it's not about helping other people, it's about putting people down. Um, it, it's simplified. Uh, that's yeah. I, I think that's important to to bring out into the world. So I would recommend that too. Then there's this one which I haven't read yet, uh, but I've um, contemplated. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I Very have, interesting. I have an ebook of that one. <laughs> have you read it already because i i've only listened to the to the author speak and and read about his theories but i haven't yeah. come to read the book yet is yeah, it I've is only, good i've only ever heard like pretty much the same kind of information but i have an ebook about it i have that ebook and i've been like thinking every once in a while when i go to start a book that that always pops up it's like should i i don't know if i'm ready <laughs> Let's let's see if you if you will in in the next six months or something because that's also the period that I'm trying to start it and then I will talk with Mercury Black and hopefully with uh, the priest that Jonathan hooked me up with Father John I haven't asked him yet but I think he'll say yes to uh, to try to decon deconstruct the ideas behind it and see if it's if it's also if you can hold that position even from a biblical perspective um, because you know that that. Yeah, right. Because there's also so much psych psychedelic symbolism in like churches from a specific time period, especially, and also, funnily enough, in Germany, my home country, um, there, there, there are many of those monasteries and churches where they have like mushroom symbolism just built into the into the um, uh, ceilings and 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 all of that. It's it's very strange. Which also leads me to the next and, and the last two books that I'm gonna recommend. The Language of Creation by Mathieu Pajot. This is like, it's essential. And it's also, it's easy to read, but it's essential. Read it. And after you read it, read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm, this is not like, 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 I'm not, you know, wagging my finger or anything. Read the Bible. I'm just saying that when you understand the, 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 the language that is used in these stories, uh, then there's, 
you can't derive more wisdom from any book than than from these stories. I, I have a quote that I want to bring up from John Verbeke. Mm -hmm. I have it written down here. And it's um it's the degree to which you don't understand the grammar of the Bible is the degree to which you don't understand the grammar of your own mind or your own psyche. And like, that's really powerful. And that's a lot of the reason why I'm currently reading the Bible with this book club. Because, like, we need to know what this thing means, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I totally agree. <clears throat> that's that's a good quote. It's yeah. because this is so, and it's been so overwhelming for me also because uh, I started... Okay, so I in in two thousand in two thousand and twenty I started working on two albums and I haven't released any of them yet, but I started working on them and the first was made from the the whole talk Peterson gave that he called in the end who dares say he believes in God yeah. that's it, that's a brilliant one I think you mentioned that earlier too yeah. um, and that prepared me for the talk that I that I then tried to make into an album from Jonathan, and that says Pentecost for the zombie apocalypse uh, talk. And I, I needed the Peters and stuff because I needed to, to you know, get rid of my, my inner 13 year old atheist. I talked about that earlier <clears throat> and understand that there's like the, especially the claim to believe in God. There's, there's more behind that than just, than just, you know, the words and stuff like that. So I, I learned to appreciate things through that and then um, got into the Pajot stuff. And he lays it out really nicely how the patterns that are that are that you can see in the Christian story and the Christian stories, that it's they are the patterns of reality. And I'm not saying this from a Christian perspective. I'm just saying that's that's that you can't step out outside of it. You can try, but then you will read a story in the Bible or from the church father, something they wrote about or from a saint. And you'll see, ah, it's, it is, it is included in, in that story. And like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very strange. It's very profound. Hmm. Some good recommendations. <laughs> I'm going to get a couple that you've recommended. Yeah, I think, uh, for that one book the sacred mushroom and the cross specifically i think that would be a good one to have you come back for our view on that book yeah i would love to yeah that'd be really good i think that we should wrap up in the next couple minutes here and i want to ask you this question marvin what is the piece of advice you'd like to get for yourself right now from the version of yourself that has had success five years in the future Hmm. that will get you over the hump what is the thing that you need to do that you know you have to do that you haven't been doing that'll get that first lo-fi flow-fi track out and those two albums what is it man up man up that's like that's it like i'm i'm i'm, I'm being whiny about stuff uh and and i'm 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 trying to be, stay comfortable with with things and just like man up man like it's not that it's hopeless for me from my perspective now i'm trying to do that more and more but i'm still you know a little a little squishy with that and and i think i think that's yeah right so that's more what do you guys think about up? that advice is that more of like a based on discipline type of action or uh also emotionally like, I mean, you know, you know how you hear millennials and Gen X or Gen Z people always say, oh, emotions are so extreme. I feel things so strongly and all that. Like, I, I identify with that. I, I feel overwhelmed by almost any emotion that comes to me. Um, but that's like, and now <laughs> what am I going to do? Stop, stop feeling emotions, try not to engage with things. So I don't No, no, just I, I have to find a way to 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 deal with that. That's because I think uh, many people, and definitely me included, try to do try to use stuff like that as excuses not to have to do something, not to have to man up, not to get disciplined, and all of that. So, yeah. 
It's funny yeah. you say that because you just reminded me of this post I saw when I was on Facebook recently. And it's this post that I've seen a few times where people are talking about the, the seething frustration in the workforce that is masked by simple statements like, I'm a little confused. And you know what I'm talking about? And it's like, no, you're missing the point. That's not seething frustration being masked by a sentence. I'm a little confused. That's healthy emotional regulation. Right. Because <laughs> if, if you were confused, yeah. like, and you had the explanation, you wouldn't be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the frustration right. really comes from when you keep all of that inside and like, you stay confused and you don't ask for the clarity or you don't make an effort to see things but the it's proper like, way. It's, it's almost even this sort of confession of belief that perhaps the other person might yeah. have something intelligent to say that would correct the whole situation. Instead of being the employee that freaks out or the guy who can't get out of bed, it's like, maybe I just need a bit more information. <laughs> <laughs> and then my emotions won't be so big. Let, can I look at this in a way where I don't believe the entire world is on fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's yeah, that's very accurate. I, I feel personally attacked by that, so that's good. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to feel personally attacked sometimes. It means Definitely. you know what's wrong with yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not complaining. Like, I'm, I'm being thankful for yeah. that. That's helpful. Like, I Very love that much. one quote. I don't know who said it, but there's something about that guy that I just can't stand about myself. <laughs> hey, <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> I said that. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, but uh, any, any closing statements from our guest, Mr. Two More Views? I, I, I assume there would be many things that I'd like to say, but that would also kind of assume that I know what to do and I have no idea. Like the world is falling apart. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Peterson's words and say them to the viewers just as I say them to myself right now. So just clean your room, like bring your family in order. And that's that focus on that. And when you, you, you when you've done that, then we can look at other stuff. And that's my problem in my personal life. And I think that's the problem in many people's lives still. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think that I think that's where a big source of meaning is going to come from in the future. And, uh, and you know. I just like to add, you know, consume good content. Yeah. Like the Book Wave podcast, you can find it on Anchor.fm, YouTube, anywhere you find your podcast, Spotify, to Stitcher, to Google Play, our website, <laughs> www.bookwave.club. And until yeah. next time, may the force be with you. Or equal to mass times acceleration. God bless you all. <laughs>